It's adventure time. Ben and I are driving down to San Diego, California to attend a balloon launch. We were invited down by Jim McLaughlin. I met him at Hamcation again this year and he reminded me, hey, the high school that I work with, uh, they do balloon launches on Sundays occasionally throughout the year. And it just so happens that it's gonna be this Sunday, so we're driving out. So let's go check that out. What are we doing today, Ben? Watching a balloon fly. Watching a balloon fly. Ask for their initials when you're done, so you know who we talk to, and they'll know, they'll give that to you probably in phonetics. Uh, for the Poway. Give them the number. Uh, it's uh the the no tam. Give them the no tam oh. number. Uh, it's gonna be a balloon, and the number is Mike Zulu Bravo zero four stroke zero six three. And it broke up a little. Can you can you repeat it again? So Mike, it's Mike Zulu Bravo. Mike Zulu Bravo zero four stroke zero six three. Is there a camera in that? Uh, this one's got a not camera. this one. That one. Is. I can show you the camera. Yeah, show me the... So it's I've got it covered because we don't we want to keep it clean. The, the balloon's packed in talcum powder. Okay. And what we've had happen is our pictures all have speckles in them. Right. Yeah. And it's because we rain talcum powder over the, the lens. <laughs> <laughs> so so right before launch, you, you pull that off? Right, That's yeah. your remove before flight tag? Ex exactly. <laughs> yeah, so it's hopefully <laughs> obvious enough that we don't forget about it. And what's the unit transmitting on? So it's transmitting on, it's like 434 uh, megahertz. Okay. Oh, yeah. So it's it's re-keyed for amateur radio, if you will. Exactly, program. right. The... Um, Meteorological frequency range, it's 400 to 406 megahertz. Mm -hmm. And when we reprogram, we completely erase the stock program the Weather Service had. And when we reprogram, it broadcasts an amateur band. Okay. And that also involves modification to the antenna because we've changed the frequency sure. significantly. So you got a bit longer antenna. Is that what that little tip yeah. is there? Exactly. It's a so that's the stock, and then you just added a bit right. to get it higher up and or longer? What's What's confusing, if you think about it, is we moved it from 400 to 430 megahertz, uh -huh. which and you is a shorter it. way, and we made it longer. Huh. And why we did that, it turns out we actually didn't make the antenna longer, because when these are stock, they have a big, there's a long sensor that oh. uh, has a temperature humidity, which is an extension of the circuit board size. Mm -hmm. So the overall length, if you count you know, from this tip of the metal to this tip of the metal, which is this whole length is your antenna, yeah. well, the stock one, the wire part, one side of the dipole ended here, but it had this big long extension, which was a sensor, right. which also is part of the antenna. So um, it does seem counterintuitive, but it, the overall length is now shorter. We just removed a significant part that used to be attached to it. Oh, interesting. So, Very cool. So we use that for filling purposes, is what you're saying, because the payload is about that weight? You guys are kind of all tangled up here. It probably would be good to attach the songs now instead of yeah. that. Oh, and then I caught it. Sorry. sorry. Okay. Should we attach the songs now? Let's see. Yeah, I think before you run that, yeah. let's get that down. So I'll let you do it. I'll let you, um, <clears throat> here. The camera one goes on the lower position, and the reason is, um, there's a string between the upper sound and the lower sound. We don't want the string going in front of the lens. So grab that. And look, see, watch that little snap, how it locks behind it when you push it. There. You see how that, now that prevents from sliding back out. Nice. Explain that a little bit. So these are recovered sounds that are uh, weather service? Correct. The weather service launched. And we've, so we've gone out, they broadcast their GPS coordinates so we can track where they land. Um, and we've got some receivers up on mountaintops that if they go out over anywhere in the desert or even locally here, 
um, and we've got them on our houses. For most cases, we hear them almost all the way to the ground, or sometimes even after they're laying on the ground. Really? So that gives us an accurate enough position to go out and retrieve them. Nice. And Very we, cool. So we then we reprogram them and um, right, put new batteries in them and attach a new balloon to them. Send it on its way. It's on its way. These valves were in the balloon next to the balloons that, oh. that the Weather Service launched. Uh huh. And it has a spring-loaded valve in there, and it's a lot like like the Schrader valve on your car tire, where oh, okay. when you insert an adapter, it pushes this valve open, and you can fill it. And when you remove the adapter, it springs shut. And that's shut. it. So we've made a custom kind of custom adapter that will insert seal to the fill valve and. and push the plunger open oh, so, that's so cool. um, the way you do it without that you have to tie the balloon off with a piece of string right which is kind of tedious because it's difficult to fill them the right amount we fill them based on a certain amount of neck lift uh -huh. and we establish that with the water bottle that we filled up to have the total weight we want right so these two sons weigh about uh, 180 grams total uh -huh. and we're we have go for about it's about two uh, 430 grams of lift so the difference is the up for upward force that causes it to rise. So this is a recovered balloon. So the piece right. came back down to earth and that right. was attached to it. Right, and I cut it off here. There's a bunch of just frayed rubber that right. was the rest of the balloon. And you can kind of, that's the same exact type of balloon. It's a slightly smaller size than the Weather Service uses. Uh -huh. um, but the, the neck part where you attach it to is the same. Yeah. And they have, um, they come in with this valve, and this valve makes it really easy. Yeah, otherwise it'd be forever to be able be to tying stuff off. Right, so, all right. yeah, well, you'll see when we fill it, we actually keep filling it until it's just lifting that water bottle. But it's really easy, just uh, if we need to add a little more, just to reinsert it and fill. Mm -hmm. um, oh, because you don't have to tie it off then. Exactly. Right. We just, so you just, we just pull out the fill. You can let some out too if you need to, because you can push the valve. Right. So here, actually, I can show you how this works. So exactly. here's right. here's kind of a custom adapter that we've made to work these valves. Yeah. So when it um, yeah oh that's that's so, smart yeah you can see it the little should, valve press yeah, you can, if you see the when I put it in there you see how it pushes yep. it open yep and when I pull it out it comes yeah in. so that's kind of Ingenious. made life really easy yeah that's super cool and then the final thing which is useful with these is that little it's a nice place to attach to yeah it. your payload right there yeah we just attach the string with a zip tie to this to this and that's little it. loop and yeah. then we're attached. Oh, that makes it a the, snap. It is, yeah. It's that's fine. You turn it clockwise. Was it Santa? Amateur just, dust. Just slowly. There are two. There is Santa and amateur dust. Okay, so you like, You'll hear it. Yeah. I haven't heard it yet. Oh wait, uh, really? Two oh, 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 yeah. No, nope. loosen, loosen <laughs> it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now, now keep it up. So you kind of shove it in there firmly so that you can actually feel it slide in. Oh, there it goes. So kind of like make sure there's no folds in it. Like let it, okay, there you go. Yeah. So you see all this talcum powder just kind of yeah yeah yeah. And you see where the sand is. Yeah. They yeah. Get all over the lens. They get all over the lens. And they've had that happen before, where you yeah. got your lens covered. We we didn't cover it because you know we. Or you got talc on it in flight or during. Well, so we looked at the pictures in the flight. We had a bunch of speckles on them. We're thinking, well, how did? They get, oh wait wait don't let twist it. Like yeah, un untwist it. There you, go. there you go. That's cool. Look at that. <laughs> okay, so we gotta wait here to test the filling yeah. into um, the balloon. Hold, hold the hose like this, because you don't want the weight of the hose. Um, oh, sure. Yeah. Well, we this, this is wait another minute, let it warm up with the sun, and then see, then add what we need. Yeah. We're getting close, and yeah, maybe when it warms up a second. Yeah, a little more. You're kind of walking it in. Kind of volume, it's like the squirt. You know? <laughs> right, right, it's right. Probably a cubic, a smidge. Foot, a cubic foot, maybe a half cubic foot equals. Okay. Cubic. Oh, so hey, I notice how it's getting. Yeah, because it's just sitting there. I think. Uh, let's let's nice. just wait a little bit. Once the, once the sun warms, it see if it. Uh... <laughs> so what's going on? I just gotta explain it to is, as the sun's warming, it's expanding because it comes out of when you release a comp air that was a gas that was compressed and let it expand, it cools off. So what I think happens is we fill a balloon with coal gas. But then over the next several minutes, it warms up, which will make it expand. And the more it expands, the more buoyant it is because you're displacing a greater volume of the atmosphere. Pretty close. So. Yeah, let's give it another, another squirt. 
Yeah, and I'm, not, I'm just, it was just interesting yeah, to me, and that's probably just a... Yeah, I think I... Yeah, I think what it warms up. Yeah. Yeah, in terms of scholarships, it seems like... I think it is... Let's just wait a minute. Once the gas warms up out of the tank, it, uh, you get a, it becomes more buoyant. And kind of the, the lesson we've learned with that is we'll carefully fill it till it's just right, and now, hey, it's got too much lift, and we'd actually bleed some off. Right. Still too much, and we end up bleeding off a lot. Ah. Um, I don't know percentage-wise, but it's like we couldn't have overfilled it as much. But then, so it's just a, the I expansion. Think it's expanding because it, yeah. we filled it cold because it was a compressed yeah. gas. Right. <laughs> How's uh, let me see what I can send you one of Maybe another. Well, yeah. Another. Just this one. All right. Let's try it. So so if we let go, it's gonna rise. Oh oh yeah. So here, let go for a second. Oh yeah, it's actually got. It even looks like it's got a fair amount of. Yeah, <laughs> it's got a <laughs> well, I think we're at the okay. point where it's time to. So we can take out. Are the, oh, the receivers listening? Um, check. Do you want to check the camera one? I'm really so do you want to take off the camera? So yeah, now hang on firmly. Yeah, make sure I don't let go. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, you start walking down. Yeah, I think really. And you want to do hand over hand. Um, release it. All right. Okay. The uh, camera is uncovered. So I don't want you to. So there's a camera. We don't want you to touch the lens. So hold <laughs> hold this one here. And with your other hand, hold it here. Don't and so you don't don't let your finger go in front of it. Okay. Okay. Otherwise, you get fingerprints on the lens. Yeah, that'd be bad. All right, let's start letting it uh, hand over hand up. And actually, start walking towards it. Can really stay standing where you are. Don't want the balloon to. This one, and are you left or right-handed? Okay, hang on to it like this. Kind of maybe the hand like. The Turn it over. There yeah. you go. Now hang on firmly and don't don't touch. And let's let go of that one, but grip this one tightly. Real to tight. He's gonna let go in a second. So yeah, there you go. Hang on tight. So just yeah, let, just let him now hold. Don't let go yet. Go look at your dad. <laughs> ben, look at me. <laughs> ready? When you're ready, just let go. Open up your hand. Oh wait, I forgot something. <laughs> <laughs> you did it! All right. Wow, yeah, there it goes. On uh, the first one we launched. Well, it's nice and clear day. Yeah, there we go. Can you see it? I can only see like a little dot on the GoPro. Yeah. I think it's gone, buddy. I can still, yeah, 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 I see it now. I don't forget our first picture yet. It's about every three minutes, and so we got a lot of, you know, blue pictures where the lens was covered. How long do those uh, pictures stay online? Um, I guess as long as we want them to, until the next flight, typically. Oh, okay. So, when are you launching again? We have to pick a day. Oh, okay. So, so they'll be up there for a little while for people watching the video. They can go see the. Oh yeah. The so images. At least, um, oh, <laughs> I got myself. Okay. Oh. <laughs> And Wait, so that was picked up by the receiver on the ground? Yeah. So it's actually that those sensitive. Oh, wow. Oh, Very yeah. Impressive. Although you see a lot of lines in it. Sure. Um, once, yeah, the, um, when we have the network of ground stations, if any packet is missed by one, it can be picked up and right. reassembled by the other. Extrapolated between the two. Yeah. Oh, wait, I'm just going to start. Okay, let me refresh. Oh, my God, it's so small now. Oh, well, yeah, it's going way up there. But you can see it a long time yeah. today because it is so clear. It's a good day. Well, yeah, I was really overcast when we were coming in here, and it burned off really nice. Uh, I'll check for pictures later. No, I guess I'm just going through the same ones, but how are we doing on position? That's so it is, it's up 846 meters. It says it's rising at yeah, about three meters a second. Three meters a second, wow. Yeah, although it's, we let it run a couple times, it kind of tends to fluctuate from one moment sure. to the next. But 
but we are receiving it so already on oh already on Toro Peak that's like near the Salton Sea oh wow um, Otay Mountain which is near the Mexican border yeah so who knows and maybe the land somewhere we can get it it all depends on the winds. That's impressive. <laughs> this green dot here, you can see there's a Salton Sea for reference and yep. there's San Diego. So that green dot is Toro Peak. That's our receiver on Toro Peak. Uh -huh. And then this green dot, you can kind of see there's Tijuana. It's, this green dot is on Otay Mountain. Okay. So that's, that's a mountain just, just north of the border. And the, the, um, you can see where the balloon is. All the different green dots on this map here are different receiver stations. And they're all reporting to this website called amateur.sondhub. Uh -huh. The batteries will run at about 17 hours, so they'll it'll just keep transmitting until the batteries are exhausted. So it'll probably rise for two hours, burst, fall for about 25 minutes, and then just wherever it lands on the ground, it'll continue to transmit. And sometimes if it's a decent path to one of the receivers, the receivers will continue to hear it after it's laying on the ground for just the remaining time left on the batteries. And they're they're actually they're they're not alkaline batteries, they're these lithium batteries. I saw that, yeah. And the reason we use those, the weather service uses them, is they work well at very cold temperatures. I was just gonna ask you yeah. Alkalines don't. Mm -hmm. but, and normally alkalines are fine for anything we would use like around our house. Sure. But they don't work up at, at uh, you know ninety thousand feet yeah where it's cold <laughs> yeah very cold yeah so it's now will those go on like an album online um there's a website that um actually if you go to this i think that you just go to type in that address okay it'll uh it'll it'll display them and we usually leave them in there we'll erase them just before the next flight wonderful and what's kind of interesting sometimes we'll we'll plot on the map where it was and then the picture it took oh okay and one of the parts i find really fascinating is the ones that, uh, the really high altitude pictures is you know if you look out right now you see the sky is blue and the really high altitude pictures the sky is gets close to being black right since there's no more atmosphere yep to, to scatter the light for blue light so that's you know, awesome super so, super cool show that to some flat earthers perhaps. <laughs> some curvature there you literally we literally released the balloon that has the camera on it right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And so the altitude these generally burst at is about what? So the ones, the weather, the weather service uses a larger balloon. Those burst at about 110,000 feet. Wow. Ours burst in the 80,000 foot range. Still, that's that's up there. That's pretty high. What kind of sets, so what sets when they burst is as the pressure drops with altitude, yeah. there's the same amount of gas inside the balloon. So it just expands and expands and expands. And finally, you can only stretch rubber so far before. It's, it's literally, literally like a mechanical failure, right? Exactly yeah, yeah. what it is. It's a mechanical failure. What's also fascinating is the ascent rate remains fairly constant. Yeah. So probably to at least a first order, the um, there's the same amount of lifting force the entire time. Right. Um, but as there's less air, there'd be less air resistance, mm -hmm. or just less dense. But the balloon also is expanded to a larger size. So you're pushing a larger object through thinner air, and those two seem to almost equally offset each other. Um, what's interesting though is after the balloon bursts, the burst, the descent rate is um, initially very rapid. Right, because there's there's very there's little no density. Yeah, yeah. Very little yeah. air resistance. But terminal velocity comes real fast. <laughs> right, and the terminal velocity is much higher, so yeah. you see a very rapid. Uh, we've seen some of the weather ones just they'll get up to I think roughly like 200 miles an hour. Oh wow! Initially, yeah, they hit the ground about 30 miles an hour. So they drop very quickly, and as they get into the denser air, they get slower and slower, and they finally the terminal velocity at ground levels about 30 miles an hour. That's and cool. I've never heard of them causing damage or an injury. Well, they're, they're foam. They're, yeah, it's thick foam. It's it's like it's like made out of like motorcycle cycle helmet type material, which is styrofoam. So it's like it's, getting hit from a tactical nerf dart from space. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Totally cool. Hurrah! They get recycled once again. We found our litter. These are gonna get frequent flyer account numbers because that one's now already gone up three times. There's almost nothing left of the balloon. This was much larger, but when it burst, most of it disappeared. So, Landed exactly where the radio receiver said it did from the GPS coordinates. So up they go again. Well, I'm out here in San Diego. Where exactly am I right now? 
uh, an area that's called Rancho Penasquitos. Okay, I've never been here before. I've been obviously oh, many okay. times in San Diego, yeah. but this so, around this area is new to me. So, so. so we're about eight miles from the coast, east of the coast, okay. um, kind of starting to get to the northern part of the city. Mm -hmm. And you gentlemen help out the amateur radio club at the high school. Correct, yes. And I think it was, Jim, you told me that this is one of the only high schools in California that has a ham club. Right, I, I think it's the only one left in San Diego. Oh, San Diego. Okay. San Diego, the only one in San Diego, and maybe the only one left in Southern California. Okay, wow. So you uh, do balloon launches, and it's once a month, sometimes about, roughly? Probably on average, would you say? We've yeah. done it more often, but... And then sometimes less often, so maybe. yeah, it's a little hit and miss, but yeah, I recently we have been doing them because we've been repurposing the uh, weather service songs into the ham bands, and so that's given us more or less disposable payloads. When we were building custom payloads, it was much further apart than what it is now, yeah, um, partly because we wanted to recover those, right? With these almost free payloads we're less worried about recovering them if we can that's fantastic but sure. if we happen to fly into mexico um we don't worry about it right so these are recovered weather songs weather service literally the ones that they release multiple times a day Radio you songs. guys basically direction hunt you're finding these transmitters when they come back down and you're repurposing them for launching with the kids, right? Reprogramming them for use in the amateur band. I will uh, have a link in the description so you guys can see the the website for either the images, because you guys do have a camera on these too, right? Sometimes. Sometimes. Today's, today's did. Yeah. Uh, so you'll be able to see the pictures, you'll be able to track the flight through the whole process. That's really, really cool. How has the reception been with the Amateur Radio Club and the kids here? I'd say quite well. The yeah. students find this maybe the most interesting part of amateur radio. Really? Okay. Yeah. Well, it's because that's what they've been introduced yeah. to. And, and we have great support from the local clubs like the Papa System, giving us rack space, antenna space on their towers and so on on the hilltops. And they're making it really helpful for us to be able to put ground stations and track these. That's, uh, I think that's really awesome that you've got a community support, you've got the kids interested. There's obviously, this is not free for you all to do this, right? So is there any way amateurs watching might be able to help you guys out? Something we can... Uh, we will try and get you the details of, okay. of the foundation, which would be a way to get the funds into the school. Okay, okay, That'd very good. good. Yeah. And now um, with our newest contacts at uh, Scripps Institution of Oceanography, we may branch out even, even more. Okay, excellent. Because I, I think you also mentioned you can't use uh, hydrogen, right? Because you've got the kits all around. You use helium. Yeah, we and that's expensive at stuff. The, at the school, yeah. That's expensive stuff now. So, all right. Well, uh, if we work that out, it'll, there'll be a link in the description so you guys can potentially get some help, hopefully, for this. Because this is awesome. I was uh, the the process. You guys have been doing this for a while, and it shows you've got a really streamlined process for between that valve that you're using, um, the whole thing. That was quick up and like students are pretty good at it. Yeah, they are. They, now they're all going to graduate because they're seniors, and we start all over again. Yeah, yeah. So thank you all. Why don't you start over here? I want to give your name and call sign if you want to. And uh... I'm David, D6DRI. Jim, K6ZUM. Uh, Randy, KQ6RS. And I'm Josh. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate uh, you taking the time. And if you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. But check the links in the description for the images that were captured during the launch and more information about the Ham Club and the local support here uh, in Southern California and San Diego. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. It's a wrap.